Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 17 tháng 5, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, toàn thế giới đã nhận định rằng Mỹ thất bại ở Việt Nam. Nhưng phải nhìn sự thất bại đó theo lăng kính nào để rút ra những kinh nghiệm và bài học đáng giá. Minh Thúy mời quý vị theo dõi sự suy nghĩ và giải thích của ông Lazy Rice đối với sự đánh giá toàn thể nỗ lực của miền Nam Việt Nam và nỗ lực của Mỹ trong phần 8 phỏng vấn đặc biệt do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. But now looking back at all of the American involvement in Vietnam, uh, what's your judgment on it? Uh, with your time invested and with all the project going on and with all the things that the American has been doing, was it worth it? Well, we failed. We failed. Uh, it, it, was, it was worth doing, but we failed. We, we can't get away from that. Uh, now, There's another question. Uh, I don't think that's, that's the end of it, just to say we failed. I think it's, and this is being done a lot now, as you know. People are looking back now. Historians are looking back at, at South Vietnam and, um, uh, and, and asking the question, what were its failures and successes? And, and I think that's a very useful thing to be doing. I think there is some real uh, uh, material there uh, that ought to be uh, more widely known and, and brought to light. There's the land reform program, which is due to President Chu, and which was, which was never reversed. The communists tried to reverse it and could not. There, there, there were all the infrastructure that we left there. That's good for people leave the government out of it for a second. That's good for people. Uh, electrification, uh, schools, all of, the, all, of the, all of this stuff is now uh, benefiting people. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's distorted a bit by the way that the current government is using it in, in some instances, but still, uh, it's there. It's something that the government did and uh, And more deeply, I think it, it gave people, the people of South Vietnam, uh, at least those who were paying attention to this kind of thing, uh, an, an alternative to the communist rule, a, a different way of looking at things. Now, to what degree this is operative now in South Vietnam, That's a, that's a very good question. Uh, the communists, of course, have tried to undo that kind of thinking. They, they try in every way they can to rewrite history. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, it, 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 it's there. And uh, so I think, and, and then you, of course, you also have uh, the, the, the way that the, uh, Vietnamese who left Vietnam, the exodus from Vietnam, the refugee exodus, what they have done in the world where they landed, right here in Orange County. And they are a big success in our country. They are uh, a voice now to be heard in our country uh, and in other countries. So uh, once you look at all of that, uh, the You, you can't just say it, we suffer defeat. You have to include all of it, all of the things that happened. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I uh, would like to tell you, uh, if we can go back a little bit to talk about what foreign service officers thought when, they, when we went to Vietnam. As I told you, we were most of us reluctant to go. We went because we were told to go. Uh, and uh, we served our time there. And 
those tours were mostly short tours, only a year and a half, so they came back. But then in 19, at, at, near the end of 1972, the government, State Department, sent a lot of us back to Vietnam. And I guess they, they wanted to see, they wanted reporting on how the peace agreement was being implemented. So I guess they thought, well, we can't, it makes no sense to send new people. We have to send the people that we've already sent. Mm -hmm. uh, but gosh, how are we going to do that? We've already asked them to go to Vietnam once. Mm -hmm. How are we going to ask them to go to Vietnam again? So they uh, created this program. And it said if you go, you get 25% uh, more than your salary. You only have to go for six months. You can take an R&R &R in the middle of your time there, go anywhere in the world you want, but this is not a volunteer situation. If you're called, you have to go. So then they sent out these letters uh, to me and to hundreds of other people, and what they found was everybody wanted to go back to Vietnam. They had mm -hmm. no trouble in getting people to return to Vietnam, and I think the reasons are probably many. Uh, but I think maybe the strongest reason is that people who went to Vietnam the first time became converted to the cause of the South Vietnamese. Was that the case for you? Yes. Okay. So you have a lot of doubt when you came in, but you have a lot of faith when you went out. Yeah. Wonderful. In fact, I, I, I was uh, in, in a way pleased uh, to go back. I was not married then. I was pleased to go back because I thought I can, uh, now I can uh, uh, make up for all the mistakes I made the first time. You were still not sure hopeful. I did, but. <laughs> <laughs> so you were still hopeful that the, uh, whatever you did before, there's a continuation and it's going to grow in a good direction, which is yeah. what you have in mind when you came back to. Yeah. That's yeah. 1972 you were talking about, right? 1972 you. You came back 1972, you said? No, uh, I came back at the beginning of 73. 73, yeah. okay. Right after the Paris yeah, Agreement. Right, out, right at the time that, in fact, I think it was January, January of 73. With, with, along with many other of my uh, 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 Foreign Service comrades. Mm. Do you still think a lot about the time that you spent in Vietnam? Sure, we all do, yeah. Yeah, we all think about Vietnam. And, uh, and in fact, I, I've been back to Vietnam four times since the end of the war, two times on delegations looking at refugees, uh, but... Uh, looking at refugee? Well, looking into the, to be more specific, I worked for a while with the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops and we went to Vietnam uh, on one occasion to look at the situation of the Montagnards who were, who were being very badly treated by the, uh, by the communist regime, the Hanoi regime, and who were escaping, uh, often by wa walking across Cambodia uh, to get to Thailand. So this was becoming uh, in itself a problem that needed some attention. So we went to Vietnam, four or five of us, to talk to the authorities there and see what the situation was. Uh, that was one time. And then another time I went with a, a group of, a uh, small group of Catholic bishops. They were really on a trip to meet with their counterparts in Vietnam, but I, I was along to look at refugees. So uh, those were the two times that, uh, and, and see what the situation with refugees was. So those are the two times that I was uh, there and that guy's. And then the other two times I went, I was just a tourist and uh, went to different parts of the country. Kính mời quý vị đón xem phần chính, cũng là phần cuối phỏng vấn đặc biệt với ông Lazy Rice, nhân viên cao cấp của Sở Ngoại vụ sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ Sáu, ngày 24 tháng 5, 2024.